I'm a content creator from Glasgow in Scotland. Um, most of my videos vary around it's funny Scottish content. Um, I do lots of makeup tutorials. I do um, other funny comedy skits. Um, I started my profile last year, um, blew up in the space of a couple of months. It was a really scary, but you know, amazing experience. I would never change it for anything. Um, I work part time in a McDonald's, how can I say? Um, as well as doing college, in which I'm studying um, SFX makeup, um, fashion and industry makeup, as well as a little bit of hairdressing, and hope to come out of it with a diploma at the end of next year. Yeah, I'm Tyler. Um, I've just started a new kind of career here at Dentsu. Uh, my new job role, which I'm very proud to say, is a content creation exec under Story Lab. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's an amazing experience for me being here. All this stuff is really new, so just really looking forward to uh, what's to come. Well, it's great to have you uh, with us, Tyler, and cheers, lovely cheers. to meet you, Leon, too. Uh, so I'm James, I look after our creative uh, agencies at Dentsu across UK and Amir, and uh, for my sins, I also look after our content and production uh, globally. Uh, in my own time, I'm nowhere near as prolific as you are, Leon. Uh, I couldn't multitask clearly as well as you, but uh, I'm passionate uh, about, uh, about football, uh, about sort of art and design. And I'd probably say the other thing is diversity, equity, and inclusion is, a, is, a, is an important uh, part of my brief, both brief at Dentsu, but also uh, uh, personal uh, belief set. Great, so let's get things started. Um, so if I was to ask you guys, uh, both Leon, Leon and James, sorry, what does a sustainable world mean to you within your role, James? Well, that's a big question to kick off with, uh, 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 Tyler. I mean, it, it, in terms of for, for, for Dentsu, I think, you know, we, I'm lucky that the, the business, the team, Scott and, and, and the team at uh, and Anna at Dentsu, you know, I've really raised the profile of sustainability and what it means for Dentsu and actually how uh, how we can play a meaningful role uh, within that. So we've delivered our first target, uh, which is about um, achieving 100% renewable energies from last year. Yes. So that's step one achieved. And then we've committed to net zero by uh, 2030. So that's part of our part of our plan. I think in terms of, you know, what can we do in terms of the role that I play within creative? Well, I think, you know, hopefully we'll get onto later you know, the importance of roles that creative can play in, in changing people's behaviours to, to, to deliver a more sustainable uh, world. But on a very practical level, you know, we've had to learn how to produce um, work in a more sustainable way, how we, how we you know, come up with ideas that, um, and how we take crews around the world and film them. So we need to focus very much more on how we decarbonize that whole process and, and to make a kind of, to deliver our impacts uh, that we've aimed to do by 2030. That's really interesting. So um, as Jim said, yeah, quite a question to fling in for the first one. Um, but the way I'd see it is, is where we, um, everything's running smoothly. Um, it kind of says it itself in the word sustainability. So by that, I like to use um, cruelty free um, brands. Uh, I, like to use um, brands with less chemicals in them, um, everything biodegradable, I'll recycle, um, like for example, clothes to charities, I will buy less stuff, um, like buy less clothes, um, like in spending all this money at the one time, buying all these clothes from it, then flying them out two weeks later and just put them in the bin, instead of doing that, I'll recycle them, or I'll just not buy as much at all and make clothes last and reuse my stuff and just do better for the world. Yeah, I think I think that's really interesting that you said what you said there, Leon, especially about um, using cruelty free products. I feel like that's a very um, well thought um, thing to do in a sense that you being an influencer and having such a large following, I feel like people will definitely take a liking to what you do. So if you do something, it definitely influences the people, hence the term influencer. So I feel like by you um, taking that step to be brave enough to, you know, go against the norm and really be a bit more conscious about the type of products you are um, consuming and buying, I feel like that's, that's really good. 
Yeah, one hundred and ten percent, definitely. Like, um, that is how I see it when I do do influencing because I have I've done so many collaborations with brands to the point that now I do only tend to do collaborations and brands like do promote them if they are cruelty free and if they are like um a hundred percent recyclable packaging because I don't really want to be influencing stuff that I know can do damage like that to the earth i want my followers to be using and as well as not just me influencing it then to them them influencing it to other people to use products that are better for the earth so it's like yeah yeah that's really good um so moving on to my next question to you guys then um so in terms of like as we all know COVID 19 you know the pandemic and stuff which has kind of abruptly hit us all um not in the best way um if i was to ask you guys then how has the pandemic impacted the shift to a more sustainable world Firstly, the obvious thing is around travel. You know, I think we've been forced to use uh, technology in a way that we didn't use it in, in, in quite the same way before the, the pandemic. Um, so from a kind of in the world that I operate in, we've had to learn new ways of, of creating. So new ways of uh, creatives coming up with concepts and working with, you know, influencers like, like Leah. We've had to learn to connect on a camera, discuss a brief yeah. and tailor that stuff, which, we, yeah, which we'd never done before. It would always be um, uh, done mostly in person because that's what you get there. So we've, we've learned those skills. And I think what's really important is post pandemic, we take the good things that, that, that we've, we've learned yeah. and we've experienced and take them into, the new in, into the new world. Yeah. But, but at the same time, I think as Created, it'd be great to get your your perspective on that, and, uh, Leon and um, Tyler. Is that it has been a compromised situation to actually um, concept um, ideas for campaigns or for TV shows remotely. You get that there is there is um, uh, a kind of uh, a physical uh, presence and reaction to ideas that you don't get when you're when you're remote for one another. And I think. The, the process can can be quicker, yeah. um, so it's getting that right that right balance. And I think in terms of, as I mentioned at the outset, the the, the production is a big part of, of 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 creative. Obviously, as as an influencer, you come up with ideas, but you are then producing. So how you make and how you craft the work and what it looks like, you know, can be done in a much more sustainable way using new methods. And I think. The technology that we've used uh, to date is a part of that process, but you know we, we just we need to continue to try and work in smarter, smarter ways in the yeah. future. I completely agree, um, Leon. What do you think? So I think during the pandemic, uh, I actually uh, like the lockdown was good as much as the technology. Yeah, I was doing everything on Zoom. That was like my college. Um, I was still in school at the time, so some of my classes were online. My every single one of my college classes were online. Um, I was working from home every, like, for example, social media collaboration. Um, so I had to do interviews with, um, so like brand, like CEOs or whatever, just to like, so they get to know me before they let me promote their product. So I would have to do all that on Zoom and it just didn't feel the same. But during the lockdown was when my kind of influencing reached its peak. Um, that was when I kind of started to grow a lot more because I was in the house doing nothing. I was posting a lot more content. I was able to post every day without having a busy schedule with being at school or work or whatever. So I did tend to like post a lot more and um, it was really good because during the lockdown, to be honest, people were coming a lot more aware about the important causes such as climate change and like diversity and because you could like no longer kind of ignore the issues and brands were listening to more of the voice of young people and um, I've had so many so much more partnerships with like brands and people are starting to like kind of recognize me not just in like Glasgow not even just like in the street like I'm kind of known around the Scotland by everyone and it's like scary but it is good so it definitely brought like a better thing to me and as i said these brands that i'm collaborating with they're all cruelty free they're all 100 percent recyclable so that was the partnerships that i was doing so it was just kind of creating a bit better of a world in my eyes and the way i was doing it yeah and i feel like that's um a very good point you made um both of you guys especially um how i can kind of interpret that question myself because i feel like you know, no one really wanted Corona. No one really knew Corona was going to happen or COVID-19 would happen in terms of lockdown and pandemic and stuff. Um, but I feel like being able to take the constraints of, um, you know, a deadly virus to be able to use it to kind of 
still pursue and be positive. Like James's point when he mentioned about, you know, remote working, it might put a strain on some people, but it could help some people save some money on um, congestion and travel, even things like in terms of um, what we're doing now, you know, online uh, through things like um, different uh, platforms, for example, like when I had my interview here, um, before I got accepted to the role into Dentsu, it was a, um, a remote interview, sorry. So I was at home, I didn't have to come and travel, didn't have to burn any um, fuel, it wouldn't be good for the environment anyways, because I drive. So I feel like um, it's about turning the negative and not allowing it to stay in negative and how you kind of change it and push it towards a positive. So I completely agree. How do you guys think um, we can kind of use creativity to kind of change mindsets and behaviour? I mean, that, that is a, that, I'd say that's a true definition of creative. I mean, uh, yeah, in terms of you know, yeah, whether you're trying to create uh, you know, a, a programme or a film, you know, you're kind of, you're telling, you're telling a story. And I think, you know, ultimately, um, you know, the, the, the definition of creative is to, is to influence people's <laughs> Emotion, you know, illicit emotion and, and behavior. I think in, in the worlds of, you know, of, 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 of advertising and, and brands, I think, you know, a key part of the role of creative is to, is to define, you know, a role that, that, that for, for a brand in the world. So, what, you know, define what it, what it is, what it believes in. So, actually, as a consumer, you can make a choice whether you want to be a, you know, uh, buy that product or be a part of that, uh, of, of that movement. Um, and you know, I think when you when you know what a brand believes in, then you can start to use you know creativity and innovation around how you activate those ideas to influence the behaviour of, of of consumers. And I think obviously really in the world of, of 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 sustainability, you know, this is this is the, a key role that, that that creative can play. I mean, we've got. Um, I mean, obviously, you came through the, the code, okay, time, and yeah. you're obviously the a shining example of that of that of that working. But as you know, as well in Scotland, we've got uh, um, another uh, program uh, called Daydream Believers, which is about introducing creativity and driving creativity in, in in education and using innovation skills. And actually, related to COP26, um, there's a new campaign which is Get On With It, and it's actually creating a, a creative toolkit for um, uh, young people at schools and in colleges to come up with their ideas and their campaigns yeah. um, uh, to tackle yeah, sustainability. Really so it's, um, yeah, I think your know, creativity can be used in, in many different ways to, to influence behavior, absolutely. 100%. Do you think that we can use creativity to tackle other problems at all? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, sustainability is a huge, a huge global, um, uh, problem that you know we talked about how we can how we can do that. I, I think a similar campaign that 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 we uh, that we've w had the pleasure to work on is malaria no more. Um, and you know malaria is still the world's probably deadliest and oldest um, disease. And and we had a kind of challenge to how can we could create a movement to build awareness. You know, so, there's so many people in the world that are not aware that it's the deadliest and the oldest disease. Um, how we approached that was, um, was to try and um, work a creative process that engaged our creative teams all around the world. Um, obviously, people think of a malaria as, as an Africa only problem, and it is a huge problem in Africa. But actually, malaria affects lots of different places all, all around the world. So, so we, uh, as a process, you worked with teams all around uh, the world actually helps from a sustainability perspective because you're not flying out creatives into different yeah. into different parts um, and and I think importantly you know with creators like like Leon in this context we were worked with creators from Africa you know designers and filmmakers and big influencers to pull them into the process and actually to to bring uh, an aesthetic and I think that was actually appropriate um, for places like Africa um, you know rather than giving sort of Western design approaches. We were working with artists from from places in, in Africa like Nigeria to show and engage with those um, people and actually telling that story at a, at, a, at a much global level but with much more authenticity. Wow, that's really powerful. I definitely do agree.